Okay, welcome back to our series on being a dog mom and getting pulled around the neighborhood by your sweet little puppy who's learning his best um, to not pull and how we can not get injured while these sweet little doggies learn all the things. Um, so far we talked about getting your shoulder blades working, your triceps so that as they pull you forward you have more control with your neck, shoulders, um, and back. And we talked about balance, working on our balance progression from like a big wide stance to a single leg stance and eyes open to eyes closed. Um, the last thing I want to touch on, postural stabilizers. So with any movement out in the world, we swing our arms like when we're walking, left, right, left, right. So we get some good postural stability with that. As we move our shoulders, we move our hips. Um, as we move our hips, we shift our weight, all those things. But when you have a dog that's pulling on a leash over, 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 you're locking one side in. So what are you doing? Locomoting one side of your arm, like a little, like a little choo-choo train, um, instead of rotating through that arm swing. Now I realize that's like an over-exaggeration. Um, so how do we combat that as our dog's learn how to be in the world in the moment i have no suggestions i do the exact same thing i lock one arm down i try and balance it so i have like the hoop of the leash in one hand um and then the side that the dog is on i have in the other so i can try and just um have a little more freedom in that movement neither one of them are moving too much um, like my right side's not just like swinging like a normal arm and my left side's not locked in. So distributing the weight between two hands on the leash, um, is helpful. Long leash training has been really helpful for us. So like he's learning how to work on the long lead. So I have a 30 foot lead. Um, and so I can, I mean, when we're like out in a field, um, obviously I can't do that in the neighborhood on the sidewalk near a busy street because you know, he'd be a pancake. Um, but the long leash when we're in a field especially helps because you can move your arms very naturally when you don't have a dog pulling right on you immediately. Um, so that you're going to have to work on your leash training to get your full arm swing back. Um, I'm pretty excited to get a waist leash. My little guy and I are going to start running and that means that I need both my arms because as a mom who has run with a stroller, yuck. Um, it's, it's not fun. And so I can't imagine running with a dog pulling one arm is that fun either. Um, so I'm going to get a waist leash. We're going to see how that works out. If it works out great, I'm happy to update everyone and, and give you a little tutorial on it. In the meantime, what we can do is strengthen the rest of our core while we're home so that everything is working like a fine oil machine when we're out on a walk. Um, and what does that entail? That is deep neck flexors, that is shoulder blades, getting them back and down, stretching out the pecs, um, doing like a full fly. So come forward, come back, open and close all the way. So you're getting your pec to its full range, um, but you're also firing your shoulder blade, right? I, it looks so weird because I've got the little arm on the chair. Let's see if we can get it from the side, maybe. I'm going to whack like all of my stuff. All right. So against resistance, um, you can either do that laying down on a weight bench and come up against gravity, or you can do it just standing, have a band, right? Have a band and really feel those pecs contract, but also feel them fully elongate. So they have the opportunity to work their full range of motion too, as opposed to just like that forward head stuck position. Um, let's see. So reverse flies. I love a good reverse fly, but I do like the full, the full fly reverse fly motion. Um, they've got good machines for that at the gym. If you go to a gym, find one of the machines. Um, let's see. Abdominal work. So any work that you can do for your transverse abdominis, I love. So laying on your back and marching up, up, down, down. Will you maintain a flat back? I'm a big fan of that. Um, the, I would say if you're having any like back or hip pain or you've been sitting a lot for work, um, don't 
get into like the, the crunches or the sit-ups, um, when you have a full range of motion of your lumbar spine and your abdominals, everybody's working fine-tuned. Absolutely. If you love it, do it. Um, I would work on some like, like a seated Russian twist is really good for those obliques in that transverse abdominus. Um, dead bugs. I love a good dead bug. Anybody who's ever worked with me knows that I do love a good dead bug. I think they're a fantastic exercise for your upper body, your lower body, your cross body, your brain body connection, your nervous system, um, stability, resistance, all of the things. Um, hip extension, glute sets. So if you're sitting a lot, glute sets, squeeze your butt, pop yourself up. Um, when you are laying flat on your stomach, on your bed, get your leg up. Boop, boop, boop. So don't let your hip come off the mat, but do your, do your glute sets, do your hip extensions laying down on your stomach. And if you want to, you can put like a towel here and do it, a deep neck flex. Sustained hold too, excuse me. I just drank a bunch of silver water and I'm just like all the burps. Um, that was probably a choice that I made today. All right. <laughs> um, so getting the butt working, a good calf raise heel drop on the stairs. So where you stand on the stairs and you come up on your toes and then you drop your heels below and then you come up again, the full range of motion of those muscles is going to be your friend. Um, so anytime you can put your legs through its full range, your hips, your core, your shoulders, your neck, anything, um, you get to release the muscles that are too tight and work the muscles that are too weak and stretch the muscles that are too, um, too bound up and strengthen the muscles that are too stretched out. All of the things, everybody gets lined up, everybody gets their like neural turn off switch. Um, yeah, sorry. That's, that's more than you need to know. But anyway, it's good when you can get your muscles work through their full range. If you want to know what your muscles full range is, very easy to Google or shoot me a message and I will happily help you work out what muscle you need to work and what, what its range and potential is and what the exercise you, you should do for it would be. Um, but because we need to move when we're walking, we want our spine to move, we want our hips to like stabilize us evenly. We don't want to get pulled over by cute little puppies that are just learning big dogs that don't know better. Um, abs, shoulder blades, those beautiful postural stabilizers, deep neck flexors, glutes, quads. Um, so like a long arc quad where you're like sitting on your bench and you kick out, kick out, just get those hamstrings stretched out a little bit. Um, or a straight leg raise. So you're laying on your back and boop, boop, get the quads to fire. So your knee goes nice and straight. If your knee gets a little saggy, you can do a short arc quad, which you put a little bolster under your knee and just lift and lower your knee. Straight, relax, straight, relax. Um, I have a ton of blog posts and videos about core and postural stabilizers. Um, if you have questions, please look at those. All of the information you need is there with pictures and tutorials and everything. But I think that that's probably a really good place to start is working on the core, the balance and the shoulder blade control and that neck control so that everybody works together to make sure that you don't get pulled down a steep hill um, in the middle of winter by a sweet doggy. And we can avoid falling because nobody wants to fall and we can avoid um, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain from dogs who are still learning. Being a dog mom is so much more fun when they're puppies. I forgot. I forgot. I'm very used to having old puppies. And this is a whole new adventure. But I'm loving it. He's a wonderful puppy. And we're very, very lucky. And someday he won't try and tear my arm off when we're on walkies. And he sees a squirrel. So, hooray. Bye.